Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the Frontline Changes Report for the day of 912 for the 23rd of August, the past 24 hours. And there is a lot of frontline changes again, and but this time round, not that much of a Ukrainian advantage. Uh, there's only one frontline change that is over at Ruskaya, uh, Ruskaya Konopelka, which is actually um, gains from Ukrainians, but after that, everything is Russian. At Spanoye, Makievka over at the Svetovay front, at uh, Zabalka, which is the micro district or the district within Torex itself, uh, Horodevka, Olevka, Novo, Novo Horodevka, Pitishe, Kuskushne, uh, Karalevka, as well as Krasno Holevka. And uh, so we're going to go into the frontline change over at uh, Kuruskaya Konopelka. This is actually somewhat of a uh, disastrous frontline change because um, this is actually a Ukrainian tank. Uh, however, it got destroyed by the by a drone. But this also still shows that the Ukrainians are committed into the attack into Ruskaya Kanapelka, and the presence of the tank means that the Ukrainians have captured uh, further grounds over in this village. However, this, like I said, the tank was destroyed, and uh, we do not know if the infantry are spread out within the houses. But I will assume they are, and which confirms the Ukrainians are uh, increased presence around in Ruskaya Kanapelka. However. Uh, the Russians are striking mm -hmm. them, uh, mm -hmm. are striking them, and um, it is not a very positive situation, uh, per se. And uh, the battle still rages on over in this sand region. The next frontline change is over at Spanoy, over in the southern flank of the Kurs Front. So, uh, based on the latest uh, geolocation, Russian forces have entered Spanoy in the south, and uh, this confirmed Russian presence in the village. And uh, because based on the uh, terrain. <laughs> I have mapped it that this entire area is also under Russian control because if the Russians can arrive here, then this entire open ground uh, there can't possibly can't possibly be any Ukrainian forces. At most, it's over at this probably plantation thingy, uh, farm or granary region uh, where there is possibly a uh, Ukrainian forces. Otherwise, I don't think uh, the they are going to be in the open ground. But this, because this is not U in Ukraine, this is not heavily entrenched. There's no uh, fortifications around here, so. This is what happens over in this area in Kursk. So leaving Kursk, we go all the way to Makievka. So at Makievka, over the Svetovay front, Russian forces has been geolocated inside of Makievka, confirming Russian uh, continued battle within this region here. Um, the According to the Russian mapping, they previously have already claimed to have captured the entire uh, eastern bank of the Zerbets River at Makievka. Uh, this is this is actually uh, just under fire for a position under fire according to Crimean Capris. We will continue to monitor and look for corroboration of the claim that the Russians have taken the entire half of Makievka. Anyway, uh, this continues. The next frontline change will go all the way to the New York front at Torex. So at, if you followed me uh, on my reporting on the New York front, you probably have already heard me say that the Russians will not go on a frontal attack. It will be in the pincer. And one of the factor of attack is going to be through the center and through the south. And what we get now in the latest geolocation is this southern one. So uh, now we have confirmation that Russian forces have entered into the southern district uh, of Zapau uh, Zapauka. So this, this district, Zapauka, this part of Torex, and the Russian forces have been geolocated, basically entering into this uh, this urban region, confirming that the Russians have really have actually taken the hospital, I'm not sure if that's even a hospital, but a hospital in the middle of the forest, uh, probably Elven Hospital, no, because the elf live in the forest and uh, everything else in the south. Uh, because if not, they can't reach here. It's basically, you know, they went around and captured everything here. So the Ukrainian forces is now under a pincer attack. What the hell? Wait, uh, I turned off the steam. People have to stop playing computer games, you know, when I'm doing recording. Ah, yeah. So anyway, this so this this pincer movement have basically you know as per I expected had happened. So basically, the the Ukraine forces is now under two two fronts. They are fighting at two fronts with Russian forces attacking over at Torex, uh, in the eastern part of Torex and in the southern part. So in the top and the bottom, oh my, oh my God, so kinky. So that's it from uh, Torex. The next run line change is over at uh, Horodivka, where we go all the way to the Pokrov front. So I have uh, the, the I have re decided that 
to complete the uh, reforming of the front line. So I have put Kalinove as well as the fortifications around it as part of the New York front. And uh, and then uh, previously, we have already cut Kalif Kalifka region all the way to the Donetsk front, leaving only Kalinove region So as part of Pokrov. So now this is now Pokrov front. And uh, let's say goodbye to the ADFK front. Okay, uh, farewell ADFK. You, you are... You have served us well. Uh, NFK is very far away right now. Uh, like the front line, the furthest front line all the way to NFK is already 30, 30 kilometers. That's as far as the Ukrainians have went uh, inside of Kurs. The the distance between Pokrov and the point of uh, the front line is only 10 kilometers to 11 kilometers. So uh, it is, of course, rightfully so that uh, the front line eventually have to rename. So now it's the Pokrov front. So at the Pokrov front, uh, the Russian forces, as expected, again I told you so, that they they are at they are they have started to attack from the south, uh, at Horodevka as the Russians are putting putting pressure on the east south south eastern or eastern part of Horodevka. So in the pincer, it's very similar to the situation in Thorax, but in a more microcosmic uh uh, pers uh scale. So the the this this. Currently, is what's happening with the Russian forces now taking the entire tree line around here. They will be entering uh, Rodevka very, very soon from the south. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's going to spell the beginning of the end, I would say. So, at Novo Horodivka, the new Horodivka, uh, Russian forces have, uh, according to the claims, Russian claims, the mapping, have secured uh, Olivka with captures of all the undefendable uh, regions in this region because uh, it, any Ukrainian forces here is just encircled. So uh, I don't think they're going to be there. They, either they retreat or they re, they surrender. Russian for, Russian claims also claim that they have secured the, the road junction uh, south of the railway railway line west of Mikolaivka and Joe location of Russian forces continue to confirm that the Russians are, are going deeper, slowly, but deeper into Novo So uh, So the battle of Novo has begun. Same as Horodivka, I never expected the Russians to go for both of the first boss at the same time. So very, very uh, ambitious. And and uh, yeah, so that is the situation over in this sector. Before I go any further, I just want to add, in case you guys don't watch the situation report, the the Ukrainians allegedly have started to uh, dismantle some of this uh, infrastructure within Selidove as well as when Pokrov. So in Selidove, ATMs are uh, allegedly being dismantled, the shops are closing, and the issuance of humanitarian aid has stopped. In Pokrov itself, the uh, the ministry building is now closed. Uh, so now everything is far away at Kramatos, the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And this is super far away. Kramatos is like so far away. So anyway, the, this is the current situation. The Ukrainians are uh, are preparing mentally and psychologically for emotional damage. So uh, over at the at this uh, Kalinove region, uh, at the Pitiche region, uh, based on uh, Russian mapping, the Russian forces have basically reached the outskirts of Kalinove as per I have expected based on the reporting from the Ukrainian and the Russian defense ministries. So the Russian for forces has basically taken the, all the water bodies at, uh, as a water line and captured the uh, Pitiche. However, this this is not confirmed by the Ukrainian mapping yet, so there's no uh, sign of... Uh, I didn't put the flag up to no signify capture. Russian forces also geolocated on the other bank of Skushne, confirming the Russians are pushing along the Voscha River as well. So this entire situation uh, is as per expected. So the frontline changes is now, now being slowly being, being reflected uh, of the reality of the situation on the ground. Uh, of course, the Ukrainians have not updated this part yet. And again today... I checked the Ukrainian mapping. Is they said there's changes, but it looks like there's almost like no changes, uh, despite they claim certain changes certain places. So, I'm not sure it's gonna like suddenly tung, appear. Then it's like what, oh, like you no, know, they're trying to throw me. But it's okay. Uh, if it if the update come up appears later, then we will just talk about it tomorrow. Huh? so so don't worry. Uh, I won't get emotional damage. Don't worry. So, that's it from this area over at Karelivka. I uh, this is a surprise because the Russian forces have attack into Kalivka. And uh, this is part of the Donetsk front right now. Uh, it used to be part of the Adyevka front. And the uh, Russian forces are starting to attack Kalivka, which is a pretty interesting uh, thing to do. Uh, so they, uh, because I 
this has been a pretty much like a given up place. You know, the Russians seem to have given up this place. So the, with the attack of Kalivka, the Russian forces could uh, force a pincer uh, into this region. As the Russians are starting to push southward in this direction, the Russians attacking from the east, from Kalivka, would quickly take this entire region. Uh, so, and this will also start the battle at Halis, uh, uh, Halis, Halisitnivka. So, um, we shall see. We shall see what the Russians are planning to do. It looks like they are trying to attack many places at once. Uh, very, very greedy. You should always eat your piece of cake before you eat, take another piece of cake. But it's okay if it's different, uh, different favor because, you know, sometimes we want to mix the favor in our mouth. So, uh, that's it from Kalivka. And I do I have anything else? Oh, yes. There's one more frontline change. It's over at the Battle of Krasnohorivka. So over at the Donetsk front as well, uh, this time around, the Russian forces have finally we have some updates in this battle. Russian forces has been uh, uh, geolocated in the southwest of uh, Krasnohorivka. So it's an armored column. Uh, they're attacking... Uh, attacking uh, southwestwards and uh, this confirmed Russian capture of this entire region uh, securing the entire southern districts of Krasnohorivka. So uh, we shall continue to monitor the situation and see how fast the Russians uh, will push. According to the report, um, they were under fire so the Ukrainians are not are holding the line somewhere around probably around here. They are not going to just let the Russians have a free pass uh, around this area here. So yeah, rejoice. The Russians are still, uh, the Ukrainians are still fighting. So, anyway, uh, that's it. And for those that watched the sim rep yesterday, I missed out one report, which is actually the, uh, the there's a helicopter allegedly got shot down. According to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, a K-52 was shot down over Kazacha Lopan. I missed this in the sim rep. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Do press the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next update.